And we have been studying the effects of nicotine and nicotinic stimulation and blockade on cognitive function for the best part of the last 40 years. And we have been trying to explore whether stimulating nicotinic receptors chronically in patients with early memory loss or MCI could be therapeutically helpful. And so as a consequence, we started in the mid 2000s with a small pilot study at three sites where we gave nicotine transdermally for up to six months. And we showed a significant improvement in uh, cognitive function, particularly attention and to some extent in memory. We published that in the Green Journal of Neurology um, in 2012. And then we proposed a much larger multi-center study where we uh, are recruiting patients from all around the United States. And so that is the MIND study. The MIND study is designed as a two-year double-blind placebo-controlled study of long-term transdermal nicotine for cognitive enhancement in patients with mild cognitive impairment or MCI. The goal of that study is to see if there is sustained cognitive benefit to patients. And secondarily, we are looking at biomarkers of Alzheimer's disease progression, and we are looking at a variety of other secondary cognitive and biological measures, including brain imaging, um, to see if there's long-term benefit to brain integrity. So we have been recruiting uh, patients now for about four years. We obviously, the COVID pandemic really set us back with recruitment. Um, so we have recruited our full sample of patients in the study. Um, however, the study has had a higher dropout rate than we predicted, in part due to the pandemic, but also maybe because of other reasons as well. And so we have ex uh, proposed to expand the sample size to 380 patients. And so we hope to be able to continue recruiting for the next six months or so to achieve that. But we are close to having a fully enrolled study. You know, there are some anecdotal data out there on the potential role of nicotinic stimulation for behavioral disturbances or agitation. We have not specifically recruited patients in this study who are, have behavioral disturbances, but we are monitoring behavioral symptoms as the, the study progresses. And I think we'll, we'll be able to see some interesting data at the end of the study on whether there's any role of nicotinic systems uh, on those symptoms as well. I should add one other sort of very interesting additional point about this study is one of the things that we're doing is working with some experts in pharmacokinetics of nicotine to actually look at metabolism genes uh, and their potential role in the outcome of this study. So one of the things we know about the way the human body metabolizes nicotine is that there are people who are fast metabolizers and slow metabolizers. And so in collaboration with Rachel Tyndale at the University of Toronto, we are she is going to be measuring for us the actual nicotinic metabolic status of all of our participants. And we will also be looking at the genetics of metabolism in these patients in the study, as well as looking at the relationship of nicotinic response to a whole host of other Alzheimer related genes. So we, we should be able to drill down on a number of interesting subtopics from this study uh, in addition to the primary outcomes.